Patrick Allman, and I'm lucky enough to be friends with Victoria, and usually when she ever needs any kind of internet marketing classes or social media classes, she calls me, and so she called me a couple of months ago and said, we really need to get some social media training for, for the people at ODOT, and I gladly complied. Um, really quickly, a little bit of background about me, and then I want to hear from each one of you. Uh, I run a company called Focus, the Focus Online Marketing Agency. We've been in business going on 17 years here, I think, in November. And this is pretty much all I do all day long is set up online marketing, set up websites, set up lead generation for businesses. So they get some value out of this ginormous thing we have called the internet, which is living, a living and breathing 24-7 entity now. And I proved this last night to my daughter when we were debating about whether or not she should get car insurance. She's like, oh, I got to wait for Wednesday morning. I got to wait for this place to open up. I got to make these phone calls. And I'm like, no, sit in front of the computer and get car insurance. And uh, we debated about that for half an hour, and it took her, what, like 10 minutes to get car insurance online. So I proved that lesson to her again last night, that there's just about anything you can get on the internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week now, including your product and services, which is what I want to really emphasize today. Um, my background comes from mainly from technology. I was in the Air Force, got here in Oklahoma City in 90 or so, worked at Hertz uh, for a while before I went out on my own. And I've been doing this online marketing thing now for about 10 years. And I'm also the person the press calls whenever somebody screws up in social media. So you, I have been and then consistently on Channel 4, Channel 9, Channel 25, and KSBI on a regular basis, but usually when someone screws up. I don't get to go in for the good stuff. It's like, oh, this person made this stupid mistake on social media. Let's call Patrick so he can talk about it. And usually it's the personal side and the business side. You know, somebody took some risque spring break pictures and they accidentally put them from their phone and shared them to their 500 friends on Facebook and they shared them to their 500 friends, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We all have a friend who's made a social media mistake online. So today we're not going to be talking too much about that side, about the personal side. We're going to be focusing more on the business side. And to that end, I want to learn what kind of people I have in the room. So can we, it looks like we have six people here. So can we start here? and go down and around and figure out what your name is and what kind of business you're in. Uh, my name is Gina Bertoletti. I work for Moore Norman Technologies Business Development Center mm -hmm. inside of an incubator. Okay. Greg Keeson, right? Yes. Yes, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lita Briscoe. I work for an archaeology firm. And awesome. And is in the incubator. So. That's cool, archaeology. <laughs> uh, my name is Tom Lee. I'm a computer programmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have it done in a month. You'll be off and running. That must be Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, <laughs> me and Sean are working together to get something. Get something going, huh? Sweet. Yeah. It's a scary thing, let me tell you. I'm still scared after 17 years. <laughs> gotcha. You, sir? Rick Reynolds from ODOT, so civil rights thing. Gotcha, gotcha. And does everyone know the ODOT people in the back? Hi, Gotcha. Sweet. Okay. Um, oh, we, like I, th I think we have some more people that are probably going to be trickling in during the day. I hope so. Okay. So. Seven missing. Okay. So we're going to put them on the spot. Come in and say, "What's your name and what's your business and why are you so late?" Because all of us were here like at six o'clock in the morning waiting for you, right? <laughs> this is a very general agenda for the day, and I say very general because there are some things I want to teach you and I want you to know about social media. But if you guys have any particular questions about how would I do this in social media or I'm doing this right now, is this a good idea? I will gladly diverge off into those discussions because those things are almost always more valuable than everything I have up here in my PowerPoint slides. My PowerPoint slides are just kind of a general guideline for the day. No fancy pictures. I'm pretty much a text kind of guy. And at some point in time, we're going to diverge from those and log on to my social media accounts so I can give you a tour of each one of those. It sounds like some of you are already active in social media. Someone, you said you guys already have a Facebook page, right? How about you guys? You already have any kind of social media at all for your business? No, no, not yet. Gotcha. So some people will, some people won't. Hopefully when all this is said and done, you will be very comfortable with what? With all the social media stuff. The first hour or so, I'm going to talk to you about my concept of what social media is, some of the things you've heard that are good, some of the things you've heard that are bad. 
uh, hour two, we're going to jump into which social media sites I recommend and why. And this is very important because at last count of the major social media sites are about 281. Okay? Does anyone here think they have time to get logins and update 281 social media accounts at a time? So if not, then you can back down to the really popular ones because that's only 30. Okay? So if you don't have time for 281, you probably have time for 30 every single day, right? No, we're going to be focusing on three, okay? There are three that I think are really high priority ones, and those are the ones that, that we're going to be focusing on. Hour three, we're going to be talking about logging in, so I can give you a tour of each one. Hour four, to me, is the most important one. What do you do with all this stuff after you learn it? Okay, Patrick, you taught me social media, now as soon as I walk out of the door, what do I do with it? it, does, it does it bring in business automatically? Does it make it rain money? None of those are true. It's work. And then right here, this one right here was to point out the fact that I want you guys to constantly stop me and ask questions. Okay? There are no stupid questions except for the ones you walked out without not getting answered. Okay? Nobody should walk away without any answers. So please always feel free to raise your hand, interrupt me, and let me know what you want to talk about. I already talked about who Patrick is. I want to talk to you a little bit about what I consider social media to be. Because you have the Wikipedia definition, which everyone goes to Wikipedia for everything, right? <laughs> I live and die off of Wikipedia and IMDB. So that's how you resolve all your disputes in the household, right? Either Wikipedia has the answer or IMDB has the answer, the Internet Movie Database. My definition of social media is just anything on the Internet that's extremely easy to share. It's usually called content. You've probably, you've probably heard this thing on the internet called content. I should be creating content. I should be sharing content. Content is just stuff you create to share your business message. It can be a blog post. It can be an image on Pinterest. It can be a YouTube video. It can be a short story. All that stuff is called content on the internet. And social media is just a very easy way to share that content. I've been in technology for a while, and one of the things I really get surprised about with social media is the fact that everything we're doing with social media, the technology stuff is not really that new. It's been around for a long time. I was chatting with my friends on the internet and exchanging music, legally, of course, um, <laughs> you know, 20 years ago. I did not have to wait for, for iTunes to come along or for Napster, for all that stuff to come along. All the stuff that the, I would say the people that aren't as tech-oriented are doing now, I was doing a long time ago. That's where I spent all my high school years, just buried deep in the internet doing that kind of thing. It's just the tools have become so easy now that all of us can do it all of the time. Hopefully, I'm going to say hopefully, I'm going to show there are a lot of you in here that have smartphones, right? You have phones now which can do amazing things. That's something else that's made social media really popular is you don't have to sit at your computer and do it anymore. I have plenty of business owners I've worked with who do all of their social media from their phones and from their tablets. And it's, it, there's probably a hard case to be made that the vast majority of social media comes from your phones and your tablets. One of the social media sites we're going to be talking about is YouTube, the online video site, where you can watch hours and hours and hours of cats doing ridiculous <laughs> things. Sometimes I think that YouTube was created for cats. And we are a cat household, at least on my wife's side, we're a cat household. And uh, that's, that's all over YouTube. But one of the things I like about smartphones is smartphones have really good cameras nowadays. They're not as good as the cameras you see behind us over here. But when we get into a little bit more about YouTube, I'm going to be telling you that that camera sometimes on your phone is just good enough to get the job done. You can record videos now on your smartphone, put them up on the internet. You can take pictures. You can make popular quotes from popular people. You can write a blog post from your phone, from your tablet. So one of the things that's made social media really popular is, OK, don't fight with me, technology. Today's not the day. I don't, we do not need your attitude. One of the things that's made social media really popular is the advent of mobile devices. So again, um, social media is just the, really, is just, is just the, the concept of sh really easily sharing media to fellow people on the internet. Social media did not start off as a business concept. Social media started off where we wanted to share things amongst each other. There's various, you could pick various timelines on social media and say this is when social media was born. 
It was, it was born a long time ago. As soon as we started sharing things, that's when social media was born. But social media started out as just you and I wanting to share pictures of our kids, of our cats, what I had for dinner. All of us became a little bit voyeuristic in social media, and we just started sharing all this stuff. And that's where social media started. Well, then at some point in time, the powers that be that run social media websites figured out that all that technology they have to maintain, all the computer programming, the servers, and all that storage and stuff, they have to make money off of it. And so what happens? Marketing people, yours truly, get involved, and we start looking for ways to use social media for marketing and advertising. And as you guys ever heard the phrase that marketers ruin everything? <laughs> yeah, well, you hear that all the time on social media now. That's like, I just want to see what my grandchildren are doing. I don't want all these stupid ads on my social media sites. Because it used to be that you could get on Facebook and not see a single ad. Same thing with Twitter, same thing on YouTube. Does anyone remember when, you, when YouTube first came out, you didn't have all those like pre-rolls on the videos? Right now when you go to play a YouTube video, like a commercial plays before it, just like on TV. Well, isn't that the whole point of going to YouTube, is you don't have to watch TV and watch the commercials? Well, at some point in time, the powers that be, Google, who owns YouTube, said, well, it's cool and all, but i got to make money off of it. And so what that gives all of us as business owners a little bit of an advantage now because we have all these places where people hang out on the Internet and we can push our marketing to them and push our advertising to them. So today we're going to be focusing mainly on the business side of social media, how you can use it to bring business in the door, how you can use it to generate leads, which I'm really big on. Uh, and I've already talked about the social media and marketing, and I've already talked about um, what happened before social media. I also want to talk to you about other forms of internet marketing really quick, because if I had a graph up here, I would have your business in the middle and all different forms of marketing coming into your business, which I'm sure you've learned from Victoria. Social media would be one of them. Email marketing would be another one of them. So I want you to realize that social media is one of the many forks of advertising and marketing that should be coming into your business. You have social media from the internet. You have email marketing, like I just covered. You have um, paid marketing, what I like to call pay-per-click. When you go to Google and you search for something, and you have those three ads at the top, and those it's usually seven ads down the side, those aren't free, but that's another form of internet marketing you can do. You can buy banners on just about any news website out there. Anyone here read The Lost Ogle at all? Yeah? Um, I've had the privilege of being on The Lost Ogle a couple of times. It's good stuff. Lost Ogle is our only local version of like TMZ, like a gossip set site. Uh, really interesting stuff. Read it sometime. You can buy advertising on The Lost Ogle. You can buy advertising on NewsOK.com, on Channel 4's website. All these are different forms of internet marketing that you should consider using as you progress in your business. And I say that because Throughout today, you're going to hear me talk about the fact that as great as social media is, it's free and it's very hard to reach all of the right people. That's one of the things that's happened with social media as, as it's progressed, as people have had to pay to start using social media, is you're not reaching as many people as you used to reach. It used to be on, on Facebook, for example, when you had a fan page with 1,000 people, you could share something and all 1,000 people would see it, and that's no longer true. And I think the number floating around right now in my industry is 13%. 13% of your Facebook fans, in particular on Facebook, are the ones seeing your updates. So, um, so I talked about email marketing. Uh, I talked about this side right here. These social media sites nowadays, what they're really doing is they're pushing business owners like us to move to the paid side. Because you know you can use, you can reach 13% of those people on your Facebook fan page, but if you slip Facebook, you know, a $5 bill or a $10 bill, you can reach, you know, 500 or 900 of them. Has anyone who's had a fan page, you said you have a fan page. You ever seen that now where Facebook encourages you to like promote a post? Things like that. They're really wanting us to do it and they're making it really cheap. You can promote a post on Facebook, I think, literally for like $5. I think you can pull them up for $5 and it, get, it reaches like half of those people. You can promote it for like $10, it reaches more, it reaches more, it reaches more. So the, the paid side of social media is really pushing you to go there. Same thing with YouTube. 
And just so you know, we're going to get to it here in a little bit, but the main three sites I'm going to be covering today, and it's later in your slides, is uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Those are my three highest priorities. I should probably stop touching the microphone so the AV guys uh, <laughs> don't get on my case. I realized I was doing that, sorry. Um, <clears throat> those are the big three that I'm going to be covering today, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Out of the 30, right, out of the 261, those are the three which I consider the highest priority. But all three of those now have a paid door in, just like they have a free door. I can put a free video up on YouTube, or I can pay to promote a video on YouTube, and I can also pay to have a pre-roll video on YouTube. Something else I want to talk to you about in the world of internet marketing, which is really cool, because I want you guys to know there's all kinds of cool, exciting things going on out there. There is this thing called retargeting. And this is something that not a lot of people talk about. Retargeting is the concept of getting someone's attention after they've come to your website and they've left. Has anyone heard of this, retargeting? This is really cool stuff. Let's say you guys are going into business and let's say you're going to be selling, oh, let's say, you know what, I'm a big fashion guy, men's shoes, okay? That's not the internet business, but let's just say for the sake of an example, men's shoes. Someone comes to your website and they start browsing around your website for men's shoes. And they say, okay, that's nice, but you know what, the Thunder game is on, they're on a hot streak right now, I'm going to hop over to ESPN and go check the Thunder game. The person who was shopping on their site for men's shoes can leave the, ESP, can leave, uh, the, uh, the men's shoe site, they go over to ESPN, and an ad for their shoe store pops up on the side of ESPN. Yes, I've seen that. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Probably over the past 12 months, you've seen that a lot. You go to a particular website, and then you go someplace else, and you're like, I, I was just thinking about that. That's called retargeting. You guys can do that, and it's not terribly expensive. And really what happens is that other website puts a little piece of, informa little piece of information on your computer, and then that other website, like ESPN, they pick that up, and they basically hit you over the head a couple times with that marketing. That's pretty sophisticated stuff, and I want you to remember that because you won't hear a lot about that. It's kind of secret ninja internet marketing stuff, but it's pretty cool. I guarantee by knowing about retargeting, you guys are definitely ahead of anybody else when it comes to internet marketing. Um, there was one other one I was trying to think about that I wanted to talk to you about on internet marketing. Well, we'll stick, with the we'll stick with the retargeting for now. And the retargeting, I hear that retargeting has a very high success rate because it's something that they were already shopping for. You're just reminding them again, oh, you know what, I was there a couple days ago, maybe I should go pay attention to it. And, you, and you're retargeting, can even get really detailed, like to point them back to that exact thing that they were shopping for. So if I was shopping for a size 13 black and white Stacey Adams shoe, that retargeting can be that specific and say, hey, don't forget those, I know you're over here watching the Thunder game, but don't forget those size 13 black and white Stacey Adams shoes you were talking about. Okay? So we're not going to, I want you to go, my whole point here is I just want you guys to know about the other things going on in the world of internet marketing. Um, how many of you just hate that marketing and advertising you see all over social media? You hate it. I know. I hate it too. But I hate it as a consumer. We have to think like business owners. And as business owners, our job is to bring business in the door. And one of the business lessons I learned, uh, I'm going to say probably later in my business career than I, earlier, is that marketing has to be a high priority. It has to be. You will live and die, and you will eat, and you will starve by marketing. I like to say that <clears throat> the worst product in the world with the best marketing will make more money than the best product in the world with the worst marketing. Do you guys ever see things that are just horrible, not very good products, but they're really popular? It's because of marketing. The best products don't always succeed. It's the best marketed products that succeed. So please, when I talk about this internet marketing, think about it, number one, in terms of business, and number two, I want to make sure that you make it a priority in your business. This is really important stuff, and I'm very happy that Victoria put on this class, and kudos to you for giving up half of a day in the middle of spring break to come and attend this. So as I, as I show you all this stuff, I want you to, again, to think of it as a business. You're going to hate it as a consumer, 
and your kids are going to hate it, and your friends are going to hate it, but your business owners. Oh, there's something else I want to touch on briefly about the retargeting. Um, because Facebook is such a big part of our lives, that retargeting stuff works inside of Facebook too. If I go shopping for those black and white Stacey Adams men's size 13 shoes, and I go check my Facebook account, it's very possible those ads are going to appear on the side inside of Facebook. Facebook has partnered with some outside agencies to basically make sure that information that you basically create outside of Facebook makes it back into your Facebook account. It's kind of scary stuff, I guess, when you think about it, the amount of information that the internet has on us and Google has on us. But as business owners, it's actually really, really going to help us out. It really is. Questions so far? About that retargeting stuff? About any secret tricks I have up my sleeve? I wish I had any. Um, I talked about social, um, social media visibility. I also want to touch on something else really briefly uh, before we get into social media is that I am a firm believer that, like I said earlier, that social media is a part of your marketing. There are some things that I think you should have before social media. Because after, after the next three hours and 15 minutes, hopefully you're going to be pretty excited about what I teach you about, and you're going to want to run out the door and get started beating on the social media door. However, there are some things I think you should have ahead of time. One of them being a decent website. Please don't dig too deep into your social media until you have a decent website. I use social media as a driver to my website. Every business should have a home place on the internet. And the reason I want to emphasize this is because I deal with some business owners nowadays who have such a firm, strong belief in social media, they believe they don't need anything else. I've got a Facebook fan page, I've got 5,000 fans, that's good enough for my business, I don't need anything else. You don't own that fan page. Those fans are not yours. Those customers are not yours. If someone's browsing your Facebook page on Facebook, they're Facebook's friends, they're Facebook's customers, and if you're lucky, you'll get them over to your business and to your website. But that needs to be our main goal on the internet, is to get people some place where we have their full and undivided attention, and the only place to do that is on our website or via email also. So please, before you get too hard into social media and you invest too much time in it, make sure you have a website. Something else I'm a firm believer of before you get into social media is um, a, a decent email list. I like to use social media to push people to get on my email list also. Remember I mentioned that we have a social media visibility challenge here? The fact that we don't get the eyeballs too much of people on social media because Facebook just kind of controls who sees our updates. I like to drive people to a place where I have their undivided attention. One of them is my website. Another one is their email inbox. And so when I almost build websites for just about every single customer, from the day one, we start building an email list. Because on social media, I may get their attention for just a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. But if I can get them on my email list, I have their attention for a lot longer. And I have their undivided attention. Social media, you have your Facebook update, but then you have those ads to the side. Then you have updates from your mom here at the top. And then you have you know, stuff at the bottom going on. You have the chat window over there. Facebook, for example, is very busy. You don't have anybody's undivided attention on Facebook. However, usually when you open up an email and the email is on your screen, there's not too much else going on. So I'm very conscious of how attention is split and how screen real estate is managed on the internet. And so I like to use social media to get people over to my website and then onto my email list. I didn't, I didn't, oh goodness gracious, you know what I'm doing? I'm just sitting here pressing buttons all day long, aren't I? Sorry about that. You probably wanted to see what's going on back there. Because I'm sitting here flipping fingers. So any questions about the email marketing side? What, does what I'm saying make sense about basically getting control of someone's attention? So even though this class is primarily about social media, I like to emphasize that we're using this as a driver to someplace. Social media is not the end of our marketing funnel, it's the beginning. Yes? If you're trying to drive people to your email list, 
Yep. So you can annoy them without annoying them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm all about annoying people without annoying them. Sir. Okay, the question was, um, because I'm such a big advocate of email lists, do I have a strategy for annoying people without annoying them? That's a good way to put it. Good, well, good way to put it, right there. Um, yes, I do. And one of the big ones, right off the top of my head, is giving somebody a piece of free information in exchange for their email address. You come to my report, I'm going to give you the top three ways internet marketers lie to you. In a free report, I'm going to email to you as long as you give me your email address. It's just an email address. You're not paying for it, and you want the information, right? There are two ways you see people build up an email list. And I know we're all about social media, so I don't want to build on this too much, but I'm a big email guy. You go to some websites, and they say, sign up for our free newsletter. I don't know of anybody in the world that wants one more newsletter. It, it works sometimes, I mean, it really does. However, if I see that a business is offering a solution to a challenge I'm having, or they're offering me a report that tells me about the top three lies the internet marketers would tell you and how to detect them, to me, that's more attractive than just another newsletter. I've got enough newsletters, I promise I do. So that's one of the most common strategies. And there's some other ways, if we were going to more depth, I could talk about, but that's the most common one. When you have a business, um, like, um, we're, we're going to use the sample shoe store again. Offer them something of value in exchange for the email address. Immediately get a 20% off coupon and just put in your email address here. You're going to make up that 20% at some point in time later in the relationship. Um, here's a book that I would encourage you to read called The Referral Engine by John Jantz. And this also ties into my philosophy of how I manage my social media. Has anyone ever read this book? Orange book with the gears on the front, John Jantz? This book emphasizes a really good philosophy which helps guide everything I do in social media. K-L-T-T-B-R. And this stands for, ready? Pens at the ready. No, like, trust. Try, buy, Repeat, refer. That's the business life cycle of a customer, including social media. It sounds like the purchasing process. That too. And social media comes into play right here. Know, like, trust, try, buy, repeat, refer. Very good book, but social media helps us in this area right here, the very beginning of the customer life cycle. You have a men's shoe store. You're a person who is not, is not really loyal to a particular men's shoe store, but you know what? Hey, this particular men's shoe store has a fan page. Why don't I like that fan page and pay attention to what they're saying? Oh, I'm going to hop over to their website. Oh, look, I can get a 20% coupon off. I'm going to give them my email address. And so now I'm basically starting to place more trust inside that business than I would any other mom and pop shoe store kind of place. So the reason I bring up this book is because, like I said, social media really helps us with this. Know, like, trust. Learning about a business, trusting that they're not going to be spamming us all the time, not going to be constantly pushing sales messages down our throats. So again, that's a good book that I would recommend, and it's on my bookshelf. I should have brought it for you. Did you have a question? I thought you were raising your um, hand. I think I do. <laughs> um, I, I'm wondering if social media can also go into referral, like if you Mm -hmm. So then everybody starts talking about it, and then I end up going to the website, and I end up looking at it. Yep. So I feel like social media could also oh, yeah. be part of the referral. Yeah, it's definitely part of this part right here. You're awesome. You're, she brings up a very good point. Is when you, when you need a new service or product on the business, who goes to their Facebook wall and says, hey, yeah. I need a new doggy daycare. I need a new doggy grooming service. I need a video company to come tape a class I'm having at Francis Tuttle. I need a social media guy to come teach a class. You are instantly going to trust those people that refer that stuff to you more than just opening up the yellow pages, right? Or more than just Googling the name. If I tell you something is good, like a book, 
for example, that was not planned at all, if I tell you that's good, you're going to trust that more than you're going to trust some random guy in the hallway at the cafe saying, hey, go get this book. So she brings up a very good point. There's a lot of trust amongst you and your social media friends. Yes? I'm having a hard time seeing how social media helps us in this industry. Which industry is yours? For what? Project management, building industry. Okay, so you're in construction. Construction. Got it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, it just, I guess what I would like to be able to, to understand before the class is over is how to target particular audiences because Facebook just does not seem like Mm -hmm. for this industry, for what I do. Okay. Um, I know I use LinkedIn a lot, mm -hmm. but that's a completely kind of a different uh, uh, animal, I think, than Facebook. Got it. And so... Um, okay, well, we, can, we can talk about that for a little bit. Are we able to get that question? Okay. Okay, did you have an answer or you want me to answer? Oh, uh, I had a related question. Okay, let me answer hers first. Right. Maybe I'll knock out yours at the same time. <laughs> You're right. I would agree with you that Facebook may not be the best place for you. I can think of some things on Facebook that would help, but where social media and the internet in general helps is demonstrating expertise. You are a construction company, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you guys probably are really good at what you do, and you do things better and differently than the construction company sitting right next to you. You need to be constantly using the internet and social media to be demonstrating how good you are and what it is that you do differently than somebody else. And it may not be producing like a 30 second commercial and pumping that to YouTube. It may be taking a camera into a building site and see, oh, see how we lay the foundation? This is what we do differently to make sure that our foundations never crack. Or this is how we, this is how we do our drywall or this is how we do our HVAC to make sure that you know you're paying a premium for our product or services, but this is why you're paying a premium. Or this is how we do our project management. Our competitor does steps A, B, and C, but you know what, we actually do steps A, B, C, D, E, and F, which is why you're gonna pay a premium for our products and services. And I must be doing something right, because Victoria's back there shaking her head up and down. I, I just, I, I think it really enhances the trust mm -hmm. factor. Right. Right. And it, it, it increases your uh, ability to attract customers who already trust you and mm -hmm. you have to earn it. Right. But who do you, I mean, how do you target those customers? Because, I mean, I think um, it's not just, and this is my perception. Right. I'm old, so I don't, <laughs> I'm not social media. It's, but uh, my perception of, of who's on social media mm -hmm. basically are I mean, either people who are trying to buy may, maybe a pair of sneakers. Right, okay. retail. We're talking the retail side. Or young people who are not necessarily buying my product. And, and so how do I, I mean, just to have uh, a presence mm -hmm. on, a social, on, on the Internet or right. on, in, in terms of Internet marketing, who am I talking to? It's, it is a little bit of a challenge to target the right person on the internet. Mm -hmm. It would be great if I could show you how to build a fan page that just targeted general contractors or project managers or the purchasing department at Devon. That would be awesome. Targets all purchasing departments that have over a $200 million construction budget every single year. Mm -hmm. You would love that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I would love it too. <laughs> that would, I would love it too. You're right, there is a challenge there. And I'm not gonna call it a problem, I'm gonna call it a challenge. Because even though I can't target it, I still think there are plenty of things you can do on social media to demonstrate your expertise, and maybe you share them with your email list, or you share them with existing clients who are gonna build that trust and possibly refer you more business also. It would also be nice that if I was browsing your website at two or three o'clock in the morning, just as a general, just general information, I could go see videos about testimonials, like she said, about how you guys do things that are different. You gotta remember, on the internet, 
Not only do we have multiple browsers open nowadays, we have multiple tabs open. If I'm looking for your construction company, I guarantee you I have another tab open and I'm looking at another construction company at the exact same time. I can go to their website and see their four simple pages of static information, stock photography, which they bought off of any number of stock photography websites, and this is what we do, we build buildings. I can go to your website and see the fact that you have a video, uh, excuse me, a library of 20 different videos we can talk about the last 20 projects, what their challenges were, and how your company got around them. So YouTube being the social media part of it, I'm, I'm specifically talking about YouTube for your business, you can do that, and then maybe from your Facebook fan page, you be sh you're sharing those things out. You're sharing, go over to our website and watch this video for this project we just completed. So there are some things I think you can do. I will admit there are, you have a, little bit more, a couple more challenges in like the retail side, like the shoe buying, like you were talking about. But I still believe there's plenty of room, and I see people do it, you know, I, Devon has social media. Chesapeake has social media. There are commercial companies here in the city that have social media sites. There is yet to be an industry I've seen that doesn't get some kind of benefit from social media. There's a company that goes around with a truck and picks up doggy doo. They're on social media. So if we were to brainstorm a little bit, I bet you I could come up with some ideas for you. But the goal there is for people to see what you do, how you do it differently, so they trust you before they ever pick up the phone and call you. And I'll give you a great example. I get a lot of business from people that look me up on social media and see everything I do before they ever pick up the phone and call me. And one of those things, in, again, is uh, YouTube videos. I tape a lot of the stuff, a lot of my talks. I couldn't do this one today because I don't have the fancy equipment that they have, but sometimes I'll just bring a tripod, sit up in the back of the room, and tape my stuff. I then put that up on YouTube, and other people after me can watch it. And very often I get an email that says, I saw your video from that last talk you did. Can you come to our group and speak? I didn't have to sell them on anything. They just called up the phone and said, when can you show up? And hopefully maybe someday in the construction world that'll be your case. Someone can call, you know what? I saw the cool stuff you guys did with commercial construction. When can we set up a meeting? Rather than the conversation being, um, what do you do? And who do I talk to? They're calling and in the, Oh, goodness gracious. By the time they call you on the phone, they're a little bit further in this life cycle than they are right here. Usually, before internet days, someone's slipping through the phone book looking for construction services. Oh, here's one. The ad's big. I guess it must be a good company, right? And they're just starting right here, and they have to pick up the phone to get anywhere down here. But you can solve this, uh, this stuff right here in the beginning on the internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without ever picking up the phone and wasting your time. Does that help a little bit? Okay, your turn. I had a related uh, question. Um, now, I guess for B two B firms, uh, is there a social media good for for B two B firms? I probably lean more along the lines of what I was just telling her. Is is just demonstrating trust. You're not going to sell too much on social media, because um, like if you guys are in the software development business, uh, which I've been there before also. Um, you're not going to sell software development services on the internet, but you're going to be able to build up some of that trust factor on the internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And Victoria has something here. No, there's not. Okay. He was asking if there was a social media website dedicated to B2B, and there's not. Social media is what we make of it. Whenever, one, of the, one of the challenges that really exists in my head is whenever someone says, social media was created for this. Can I get away with saying BS? <laughs> okay, I don't believe that. Social media is what we use it for. So if you choose to use it for B2B, it's for B2B. If she chooses to use it for construction, it's her thing. You take it and you make it work for you and you demonstrate your expertise and like Victoria said, you also build up your brand awareness. So that, no, to answer your question, unfortunately there's not. Just like, you know, Facebook was not created for business but we're beating the heck out of business with it. Same thing with Twitter, same thing with YouTube. People are taking these sites and they're using them for their business and what they want to advocate. 
And I have yet to see a social media site that was created for a particular purpose because people, marketers come along like me and distort the heck out of it. We do, marketers tear up everything. But hey, I gotta put food on the table. You had a question here. I did. Um, I wanted then you have to one back there. LinkedIn. Right. She was talking about LinkedIn earlier and I know that some of the information that we've gotten from other people that mm -hmm. we work with typically use LinkedIn and not the other sort. So sites, yeah, and that was one of the places that I considered putting on the slides today. Um, LinkedIn is another option. That's what she was asking. Is LinkedIn a good option? Yes, LinkedIn would be a good place for you to search and look up, you know, project managers and construction managers and make introductions and connections. Um, if Victoria gave me a week, we could run through ten different social media sites every single week, every single day. I promise. Uh, I just chose to focus on the three today, but don't rule out any of the other ones. This slide right here, for those, I'm not sure if you walked in when I was talking about this, there are 203 social media sites, bigger ones that have like, uh, and the, the, out of that, there are 18, I think I said 30 earlier, I apologize. There are 18 that have over 100 million users. So in my opinion, there are 18 major ones, and there are 203 that are very active. Today, we've only got time for three. Victoria would not give me a week. She only gave me four hours, okay? I'm really sorry. Question back there, there was one. I just didn't know if I was the only one who didn't know what you were talking about when you said B2B. Oh, business to business. B2B, B2C, business, business to consumer. That would be really nice right about now, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, B2C, B2B is us doing businesses, businesses talking to businesses, which is primarily what she does. She's not selling commercial construction to my mom. Or there's the retail side, B2C, businesses selling to consumers. What, B2B, B2C, what else is there? B2 government, that's hers, B2G, B2 government. So, good question. I, I just assume that everyone knows what B2B is, right? Because I wake up and think about that stuff all the time. Okay, really quick, yeah, there are 18 sites that have over 100 million users, 203 what I would consider major social media sites, and we're going to be talking about three today. Really quick, before we go too much further, does anyone need any kind of break? I like to check every hour to see if anyone needs like a coffee break or another break. Good to go? Okay. If you need coffee, by the way, feel free to stand in the back of the room. Victoria was nice enough to have that provided for us, so we've got coffee. Right there. Okay, she did too. And there's water right in the back of the room also. Bless you. That's okay. <laughs> um, like I mentioned earlier, these are the three we're going to be focusing on today. And I put these in order of simple, I'm like easy, a little bit hard, and the hardest. But I also put these in order of value. And in my opinion, you get value out of these websites in this order. Twitter is the really easy one. I really don't have to look at my notes for this because I promise I live and die by these things. Twitter is just really short messages out. And we're going to be getting on Twitter here in a little bit. Really short messages to, to people, as long as text messages. Twitter allows you 140 characters because Twitter was originated as a text messaging, basically a, a way that you exchange information via text messages. And traditionally in text messages, you only got 160 characters. So what the Twitter people did is they came up with a format that would allow you to do 140 characters plus some extra hidden information in the messages back and forth. That's why Twitter allows such short messages. Twitter, I think, has also kind of abused our language a little bit because you have people making up new words so they can fit all that stuff inside of a tweet. Um, Twitter is slowly expanding, in my opinion, and it needs to, to keep up with the other social media sites. You don't get very much value out of just looking at like a list of text messages. Because when you log into your Twitter account, that's what you see. It looks like a big, giant, long list of text messages. Now, they've expanded recently over the past couple of years into having actual pictures on Twitter. And I believe they're going to expand more. Twitter is really good for fast, um, Fast breaking news and sharing information. Um, Twitter moves very fast. And we've had some amazing world events that basically have come out via Twitter. Um, the one that comes to mind right off the bat being the pilot guy is that thing on the Hudson. That plane that landed on the Hudson a while back. There was a guy who was on Twitter on his phone on a boat that was picking up people. He took a picture of that plane on the Hudson right after it had ditched in the Hudson. And that went around the world very fast. 
Same thing with um, how we captured, not Saddam Hussein, but the other guy. Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Did you know that the, the first leak to the world that got out is there was a guy that lived in that area who was on Twitter. They made an update. Why are there helicopters in the area? Yeah, that, that, that got out that way. Yes? Can I ask? Okay, I'm not a Twitter person. I'm a Facebook person. Okay. So my, I know when Facebook things get around, people share things. So how does, let's just say me being a normal person, I don't have a whole lot of followers, mm -hmm. I take that picture. How does, how does that get all over the place on Twitter? Um, let's get into that a little bit more once we get into Twitter, because okay. we're going to be getting each individual ones. It's just a matter of building up your friends list and getting them to reshare that stuff for you. Okay, Basic, so it's kind of like Facebook? It is. Share it? Okay. Exactly, exactly. Um, here, by the way, are some of the other websites that you might have heard of. Pinterest, pictures primarily only. <coughs> Vine, seven second videos. For those of you that already can't pay attention to 30 second videos, mm -hmm. have a really short attention span, we've got the seven second video website. Instagram, pictures with all kinds of fancy filters applied to them. Tumblr, like little blogs online. LinkedIn, primarily for B2B and really good for making introductions to other companies. Reddit, viral stories. Google+, which no one believes is going to go anywhere, but I'm a big fan of Google+. Foursquare, you basically check in and tell everybody where you're going all the time. I'm here, I'm eating. I'm here, I'm eating. I'm here at work. Zanga and MySpace, two of the first social media websites which are slowly making a resurgence. But these two right here, in my opinion, are primarily for playing around. So out of the 203 down to the 18, right here, in my opinion, these are the ones I was able to put on a slide without even thinking about it too much. So does anyone spend time on any of these besides the, the YouTube, the Facebook? Right. Don't get paranoid over this, I promise. You do not need to be on these sites. I'm a big fan of picking a couple of them and focusing all your time and energy on there. OK, getting back to here. We already know what Twitter is. Facebook is the big kahuna in the book. Facebook is where people spend a lot of their time. And I know people that, that basically that's the main reason they even have a computer is to spend time on Facebook. And you can share everything on Facebook. When you log into Facebook, you're logging to something called a profile. And then typically what businesses do is they create a fan page. And as an individual, you can have one or more fan pages. If you run multiple businesses or multiple entities, you can do that. And YouTube is one which is primarily for online video sharing. Now, if I were to have done this class a year ago, this slide would actually say Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. However, I've kind of changed my opinion a little bit that I want to basically find a way to build up that trust a little bit more. And I also want to find a way to, gra to basically grab a hold of someone and keep their attention a little bit longer. And you can do that better, on my opinion, on YouTube than you can on LinkedIn. Remember I talked about the importance of building up an email list, keeping a hold of someone's attention? <clears throat> people can follow you on Twitter, people can follow you on Facebook, and people can subscribe to your channel on YouTube. Now, yes, yes people, can, yes, people can follow you on LinkedIn also. The nice part about someone subscribing to you on YouTube, and I'll go into YouTube a little bit more, a little bit more detail a little bit later, but people get an email whenever you upload a YouTube video. So I have 150 people subscribed to my YouTube channel. Every time I upload a video, it automatically emails 150 people. And hopefully they open up that email, and hopefully I have their attention for 30 seconds, five minutes, half an hour, whatever the video is. So my opinion recently has kind of switched more to YouTube because it's almost like having a second email list. LinkedIn is still great. As a matter of fact, for a while, I taught the social media class here at Francis Tuttle over in the BNI building, where I guess now is here, right? BNI is here now? Used to be there, now it's here? Upstairs. We're upstairs. OK, I didn't know that next time I come here. I used to teach the, Fran the social media classes at Francis Tuttle three or four hours, like on Wednesday nights, or I think it was Saturdays recently, and I just I stopped recently. And in that class, I primarily taught Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. However, my opinions change a little bit more. I also think it's very important, the fact that each of us have, has like a little miniature video studio on our phones now, that we be doing more online video. I think it just builds trust more. I'm not quite sure what your opinion is. I can read a blog post for someone all day long. I can see a short Twitter update. 
But if I watch someone talking to the camera, and I can look at their eyes, and I can see their body, I have a pretty good idea of whether or not they're lying, but I also get more of a trust from them. If I were to basically type up everything I'm saying in this class and send it to Victoria, and Victoria forwarded it to all of you, number one, who knows how much attention you'd pay because it'd be a long email. But also, it's just words. They're just black and white text on paper. However, by you coming to this class and by you hopefully watching the videos later on, and even for the people that, those of you that didn't get a chance to come to class and watch the videos, you probably have a bigger trust factor because you actually see me talking. And you see me waving my arms wildly. So, recently in the past year, my opinion slipped more from LinkedIn to YouTube. There are no right and wrong answers here. If YouTube doesn't work for you and LinkedIn works better, by all means do it. If Twitter doesn't work for you and you want to focus on Facebook and LinkedIn, by all means do it. Just like social media was not created for any particular purpose, there are no right and wrong answers in social media. And a lot of times what you can do is use one to push people to another to push people to another. Twitter, for example. You can use your Twitter account to push people over to your Facebook fan page and then once a month make a video and push people from your Facebook fan page over to your YouTube account. If, if uh, people that are in marketing understand that all marketing is done in terms of funnels and campaigns. You start with a bunch of people, we get to a fewer people, we get to a fewer people, we get to a fewer people, and eventually we get down to someone who's hopefully going to open up their checkbook and write us a check. We have to start with a bunch of people first. So you can start with a bunch of people, you know, filter them down to here, filter them down more to here, and then maybe get these YouTube people to pick up the phone and call. Maybe your videos at the end say, for more information, call 773-5927. Every social media update should have what I call a call to action on it. And a call to action is you're telling somebody what you want them to do next. I use Twitter a lot, for example, to push out old blog posts. Go read my old blog post from 2007. That blog post may have included a video. So my whole point here is, is I want you guys to look at this. Is these are tools, just like you walk down the aisle in Home Depot, these are tools. Figure out which ones you want to use and how you want to use them for your business. Everybody in every kind of industry has figured out a way to use social media and make it work for them. One of the latest ones which really kind of surprised me is, the, like I said, the truck that goes around and picks up doggy doo. Who would have thought that, you know, now hopefully they're not on Pinterest sharing pictures, <laughs> and hopefully they're not on YouTube talking about just how, exactly how they do their job, but, you know, there is, there is a market for what they're doing, and they can use social media to, to pump out their own commercials, things like that. Something else that I find really interesting also is people are using social media in combination with conventional marketing and more of, the thing, of that campaign thinking, like let's start here and continue the message here. You see this a lot in Super Bowl commercials. Someone plays a Super Bowl commercial and they're like, for the ending, go to yeah, 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 godaddy.com slash commercial. And what a lot of companies are doing also in the Super Bowl is they're making almost like a pre-commercial. At the end of it, it says, be sure to watch our commercial during halftime. And that commercial during halftime says, be sure to go to our YouTube channel and watch the ending. So they're using it as a continuation of other forms of marketing. I was in a class, no, excuse me, I spoke the other day to the OKC Ad Club at the Oklahoma History Museum. They're just northeast of the Capitol, as a big airplane in the, in the foyer kind of thing. And somebody there from a TV station was asking me, all the people that come to us and do TV advertising, how can I... Um, how can we basically continue the conversation after the TV ad is over, drive someone to social media or drive someone to a website? And I said, don't drive someone to your main website, drive someone to some place that continues that, channel, that, that commercial they bought on Channel 4. Maybe channel, the commercial on Channel 4 is a teaser and all the good stuff is really on social media. Does that make sense, how you think of things about in terms of a campaign, in terms of, of a funnel? So think about that for, for social media. All marketing is campaigns and all marketing is funnels. Any questions?
so far. You guys keeping up with me? No one's falling asleep yet? Good deal. Is it too hot in here or too warm, or is everyone okay? Everyone's okay? That's a very rare occasion. Everyone likes the same temperature in the room. Um, oh, I also want to talk about the fact that almost all social media sites that come out right now are just variations of these three. That's another reason I like to focus on these three. What's Vine? Vine is a seven second version of YouTube. And there are plenty of other sites that like to come out and say, oh, we do this better and different. But these were some of the first three big ones. And it just appears to me that almost everything that comes out now is some variation of these three. Now, does anyone have, I'm just kind of curious, does anyone have any sites that they use that, that are not Twitter and Facebook and YouTube that they've had good luck with? Nobody? We have a business in the incubator that takes pictures mm -hmm. which go onto their Pinterest account and then links automatically to their Facebook and that helps them quite a bit. Right. So their funnel is Pinterest and then Facebook. Yeah. Right. All Pinterest is, by the way, is a giant photo slash collage info, uh, image sharing site. Does anyone spend a lot of time on Pinterest? I love Pinterest. Pinterest? Like what particular area do you like on Pinterest? Uh, the food. Food? How about you? <laughs> Put home decorating. If your company is an organ, if your company is someone who um, people buy and they make decisions, you know, visually, based on what they see that you're doing, then Pinterest might be a good option for you. And it works really well for foodies. You know, nothing, nothing like selling a chocolate cake recipe than showing a picture of the chocolate cake. That's an instant sale to me, right there. Just shut up. Here's my checkbook, <laughs> kind of thing. That's the kind of customers you want, right there. Is just Give me the money. Here's my money. Take it. Pinterest is also really good for um, weddings. Brides-to-be love to spend hours and hours on Facebook. And then the fathers of the brides-to-be don't like them spending hours and hours on Facebook. <laughs> I want this daddy. I want this daddy. I want this daddy. But Pinterest is another option. I personally don't spend that much time on Pinterest. I sell marketing services and... There are some things I do personally on Pinterest. I share, I like, uh, I like to share motivational quotes that I come up with, and airplanes. I'm a big airplane kind of guy, so I have my Pinterest board of airplanes. Does anyone here do a lot of, a lot of pinning? Nobody? No, a lot of pinning here. So we just have the two of you: food and home, yeah. and food there. Like they have like new gadgets that you don't ever see. You know, right. Things. So I like to click on those, and then you end up going to the website where they sell them. Right. Like that, so. Right. Pinterest is pretty cool because. It's, it's all visual. You go to Pinterest and all you see is pictures, pictures, pictures. But you can link each picture back to your website or to a particular page on your website. So again, men's clothing store example. As a men's clothing store, you can go and dump your entire catalog on Pinterest and I can sit there and browse it all, all at once. All the pictures. I'm like, oh, I like that one. I click on that and it takes me to that exact page over on my website. So if you're the kind of person who's a B2C business or a retail business, it can almost be like a secondary catalog for your business. The cat thing. My wife spends tons of time on Pinterest looking up things related to cats. Animals are really big on Pinterest. Babies are really big on Pinterest. I talked about the wedding decor, and yeah, food is just humongous. I did a segment on KSBI the other day where I talked about four major foodie Pinterest blogs you can follow. So Pinterest might be a good option for your business. Vine, I don't know why anyone does Vine. Instagram, so-so. Out of all these on here, the, the, not the primary ones, the ones I would recommend, the secondary ones, let's say, maybe Pinterest, LinkedIn for B2B, okay? If you're a retail, B2C, Foursquare is good. If you have a location, Foursquare is good. Foursquare is basically the concept of, oh, I visited your location, I'm going to check in and tell my friends. And they've gamified it to where you get points every time you check in, and after so many points, you are the mayor of that location. Okay? And then your friends can try to knock you off from being mayor to checking in also. The nice part about Foursquare is you can, people that choose to check into your business, you can push advertising to them. Yes? I'm wondering, what, what are your thoughts on demographically, is it, is it more, for instance, if I want my business to do, let's say, four square, mm -hmm. I mean, demographically, to me, in my mind, that's for the super young age group. They're really big on that. Is that something I need to pay attention to when I'm deciding which social media I want to look for? I would say if you're a place that people visit, four square is one you definitely do want to pay attention to. Okay. 
especially if, you're, if, if uh, restaurants are huge on social media. If I'm not mistaken, people can also rate the restaurants on social media just like they can on Yelp. And so I always tell a retail organization, yes, if people come and visit, you want to be on Foursquare. There's a cookie place, uh, one smart cookie right over here that I believe is on Foursquare. My favorite place. Yeah. It's right next to the YMCA. Yes. <laughs> And the YMCA is right next to the pizza place. That's, yeah. my, that's my YMCA, I can walk to there. there ha you know, in my opinion, the same person has to own the YMCA and the cookie place on one side and the pizza place on the other side. I kid you not, she'll verify this. There's a gym in between a cookie yeah. place and a pizza place. And when you walk out, you're thinking, oh, I burned all those calories, I can go get some pizza. Exactly. Go get a cookie. That's the perfect business model right there. You buy all three of those locations, you're, you're making money hand over fist, right there. But yeah, that's one thing I, I advocate huge for retail organizations is, um, is uh, Foursquare. Uh, because when you check that in, it shares it with your friends. And you can see where all your friends are checked in. And Foursquare is also cool because at the larger organizations, you can see who else is checked in there with you at the same time. If you check into Francis Tuttle on a, on a regular day, I bet you're going to find all kinds of people here that are also checked into Francis Tuttle. And the people also compete for mayorship. That's kind of funny. And some people, like me, do like drive-by check-ins. Like, oh, I, I, was, I just passed that Starbucks, right? So I can check in. I'm at the red light right by the Starbucks, so I'll check in the Starbucks right there. Yeah, Foursquare is huge for uh, storefronts, is what I would say. Okay? Anyone here using Foursquare at all? Do you check in a lot of places? Yeah. Yep. I'm the mayor of ODOT, actually. Are you? <laughs> okay. Any of you other ODOT employees? Get on Foursquare and try to knock him off of his throne, okay? <laughs> you go back, my girlfriend and I go back and forth. Okay. She's the mayor sometimes and I'm the Right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing because if there's a particular place you want to put on Foursquare that's not on Foursquare, you can add it yourself. And I kid you not, there was a friend of mine who worked at Opubco, the big black tower over on Broadway Extension. He made his cubicle a Foursquare location. <laughs> so when you went to visit him, you could check in at his cubicle. And he was obviously usually the mayor. But, you know, you can make any location, and it makes it a little bit fun. But with all these social media sites, especially Foursquare, what you want to do in a retail location is you want to put up signage to encourage people to follow you there and to check in there. There are plenty of businesses, and I believe even Foursquare will do this for you. If you contact Foursquare, I think they will mail you Foursquare stickers you can put on your windows. <coughs> it could say, check in at Foursquare from our location. I've seen those at some businesses around the place. The QR codes? No, no. It's just a regular check-in with the Foursquare logo. Same thing with Google reviews. You've seen Google will send you out free stickers. This is review us on Google. And I wouldn't be surprised if Yelp does the same thing also. Yes? I just wanted to share, um, I go to, sometimes I go to like this little, it's a little nutritional place. Mm -hmm. It's really small, but they actually, um, we check, they give you a discount when you check in on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then every single time I check in, I have friends that are like, what is this? So then it's just good marketing. Yep. And, and then they go and check it out. Or if they're constantly seeing me checking in to get that discount, they're wondering where it is that I'm going. Exactly. And what I'm doing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. Yeah, it's, it's a sharing. She was talking earlier about, we were talking over here about the referral part right here. When you, when you set up your Foursquare account, you can say, do I, you automatically want to share my check-ins on Twitter and automatically share my check-ins on Facebook. So now you are being an advocate for another business. And the other business, it's free advertising for the other business, they're going to eat that up. Someplace has a retail location, I don't know why they wouldn't be on Foursquare. Anyone else? We know he checks into Foursquare. Is anyone here a big Foursquare user? Not really? I was there for a while, and uh, just time. Later in the four-hour session, we're talking about time management because we don't have time to do everything. Remember I told you you could be on those 203 websites or those 18 websites? We don't have time to do everything. So who just joined us? Oh, and I'm sorry, Lori, I don't have my glasses on. All I know is there's a lady over there in purple. That's all I know. It's required. It's required purple? Okay. I'm sorry, Lori, I didn't recognize you. Um, uh, so I was just thinking of the fact that about all the other uh, social media sites besides the big three that we're covering today right here. Twitter. We talked about this um, for a little bit, and what, we could, what I'd like to do right now, if we can, is at this point in time, I plan for us to take a break so I can start logging on to these sites. So you guys don't sit here and watch me type in my user IDs and passwords. <laughs> so if it's okay with Victoria, can we take like a quick maybe five to seven minute break?